Hey everyone, uh, my name is Shridham Das. Uh, happy Saturday morning. Um, uh, I'm a front end engineer at Remote, um, and here's my talk about. Uh, uh, this is my talk. Uh, we offer international payroll benefits taxes. Okay, uh, I think there's a slight lag. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, we we offer international payroll benefits, taxes, uh, compliant for businesses big and small. Uh, yes, my company is literally called Remote, um, and we do have a help page for people who have issues with the TV remotes. Um, I actually mean it. We we actually do have one. Uh, anyways, uh, my talk today is going to be about building a green screen using React and HTML elements. Um, but I don't have uh, anything green, so this is going to be a blue screen. Um, so what is exactly a green screen? So uh, the basic idea is you're trying to remove the background um, from a subject uh, of a photo or a video. Um, if you've seen news broadcasts, if you've seen streamers on Twitch, uh, or if you've seen pretty much any movie, uh, you know what um, you know what a green screen is, uh, except Interstellar. Um, Interstellar didn't have any green screen. Pretty cool. Uh, okay, so here is basically what we're going to be doing. Uh, we'll get the input from the user's camera. Um, we figured out how to do that. Uh, we're going to remove the blue stuff, um, and then we're going to show this process video back. And that's that's about it. Uh, nothing much there. All right. So how do we get the user video? Uh, so we have a function called media devices or get user media, and with this we're able to get the input. Uh, because this prompts the user for permissions to use uh, the media input, and this returns a media stream to us. Uh, and then using the video tag, uh, we can actually play this back, uh, show this incoming video back. All right, so let's let's get to some code. Um, so here's a very simple uh, component uh, that we have, uh, and we're just going to add a video tag add, and attach a ref to it. Uh, and then we're going to define some constraints to kind of uh, get only the uh, video part of your uh, because we don't really need audio. Uh, and then we're going to call our function. Uh, and then the, we'll also be getting the media stream as a promise, like I mentioned. And then uh, what we can do is actually define the source object for the video as this incoming media stream. And then once uh, this video has loaded, we're just going to play it. All right, super. Uh, we we already have some video. Uh, we're we're done actually with you know a big part of it. And since this was you know tip for me, uh, now it's here for you as well. All right. So what's next? So now that we have the video, how do we actually process it? So uh, in September 2019, uh, the team at Flipkart uh, released this uh, blog post where like the it was called Try the Shade on Flipkart, where essentially they used uh, the canvas element uh, to programmatically color a base image and then show these various lipstick shades. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful talk, but the TLDR here is that canvas element is super powerful. Uh, you can actually draw on it uh, with JavaScript. So you just drop in your canvas element in your HTML, and then you can do the actual um, drawing part in inside of JavaScript. So uh, let's go on from here. Uh, we're going to add a canvas element here and then attach a ref to it so that we can access it inside uh, inside of our uh, React component. And then the style transform that you see is just to you know flip the image. OK, so uh, we attach a ref to it. Uh, and then using the function get context 2 d we're getting a 2D rendering context. We are able to uh, you know, get a get a get an object through which we can actually paint on the canvas itself. Super. Uh, and then once this video is loaded, let's try to actually draw the image. Uh, draw the video on top of the canvas itself. Uh, sweet, uh, this works, but OK, there's no glitch. The second image is actually stationary. Um, and wh why does that happen? Well, that is because we're only kind of painting on the canvas once. And what we need to do is just draw on the canvas again and again, just as fast as possible. So, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to define another function inside of it. Uh, we, we call it rapid refresh. Uh, and then we're going to do what's called a big brain move and then just call it again and again with the side timeout. Uh, super. And then now we have uh, you know, 
uh, now we're able to draw on top of our canvas itself as well. So, so the next thing is actually understanding how a pixel works. Uh, uh, anything that we see uh, is usually a mixture of red, green, and blue. Uh, and, and all these modern devices, depending on the intensity and the brightness of each of these three individual colors, we're able to see millions and millions of colors that are rendered on these displays. So uh, using this information, let's, let's try to uh, start processing um, our image that we have here. Uh, so we, we define a new function. We define the arguments that we'll be getting. Uh, and then let's try to actually get the at the moment image back from the canvas itself. And uh, let's try to see what's actually inside uh, this, this snapshot. So here's uh, what we actually get. Um, OK, we, we already start to see something that some things that make sense, some things that don't make so much sense right now. We see the height and the width, which is uh, the dimensions that we access from uh, the input, the in, uh, the input itself, and then we see something called a uint eight clamped array. All right, let's so let's open it up. Let's see what happens uh, inside. Okay, that's a pretty pretty long array, but okay. So now we start to see actual values. So what exactly are these? All right. So first things uh, first things first. What exactly is a uint eight clamped array? Uh, this is basically an array of 8-bit unsigned integers, which are uh, limited to the values of 0 to 55. Uh, and then with the numbers that we actually got, let's try to actually group them up together and see if something comes out of there. Uh, so we have all these numbers, and then let's just pair them in, in groups of four. And what this actually is, is these are the values of each individual pixel. We have red, we have green, and then we have blue. And then we also have the last value, uh, which is something called the alpha value. Uh, now, if you've worked with uh, designers or if you worked with CSS in general, then you, you might have a good idea what alpha is. But basically, alpha is the opacity of the pixel itself. Uh, this will come in actually pretty handy. All right, so let's go back to our, our function that we had. Um, so let's, let's we're defining a new type here. Uh, the one that we got from our uh, our portfolio, and then in our snapshot, uh, let's so the format that we had was like I mentioned the red value, the green, and the blue, and then the last value was the alpha, and then the total number of pixels will actually since we grouped them by four is the total data's length is divided by four, uh, and if we actually see that number, this will actually be equal to the height and the width as well. OK, so now we have a simple for loop. We're just going to iterate over all the individual pixels. And then we'll extract the red, the green, and the blue value. And then since uh, we want to remove the blue color, we want to check if the blue is the more highlighted value. So we'll basically check if it is uh, if the value of the blue, pix uh, blue value is more than the green, as well as the red. And then if that is the case, we'll simply remove that pixel altogether. We'll make it transparent. And to use that, we'll just turn its alpha value to zero. And then we'll just take this uh, the, the entire snapshot that we have, and then we put it back on the canvas. Awesome. Uh, OK, that doesn't really look that great. Uh, what, what happened? All right, so the problem is all these colors that we see are, you know, like I mentioned, always a mixture of RGB. And then the blacks that you see, they're not really picked up as complete blacks by my camera. Uh, and then you know it detects that there is you know a blue shade of it as well, and then the blue is more than red and the green. But we can understand that that's not the case. This is not exactly blue. This is this is black. Um, so what we need to do is kind of define a baseline to kind of say that okay, no, this is blue. Uh, you know these blacks are not. All right. So what we're gonna do is something pretty simple again. Uh, we'll just check that the individual value for that color is more than 100. And that's it. Uh, I, you can no longer see my blue T-shirt. Uh, and, and we're actually done. Uh, that was that was all. Uh, I have uh, linked all these sources. Uh, I'll share uh, the links to my slides as well. Uh, you can check out the MDN Web Talks. Uh, there's a pretty great guide there. Uh, you can also check out the talk by Vasha Saha and the team at Flipkart. Uh, and if you're curious uh, about the stuff that I use for this talk, uh, this is built with MDX tech and Code Surfer. Uh, the font that I've used is ISFK, and that's the particular shade of purple that I use. And then if you want anything else, you can you can check out my users page. Uh, 
We're also hiring at remote. Um, if you want, you can always check it out. We we are a hundred percent remote and async team. Uh, you choose your own working hours and everything. Uh, we have a React Elixir stack, and the creator of Elixir is actually an advisor to us. Uh, and that's it. Uh, you can actually check out the green screen live on my website. Uh, the slides are available as well, and you can shout me out on Twitter if you'd like. So uh, I have. I should be having a session in in the session staff. So you can you feel free to you know come over and ask me anything about my talk. Uh, work culture at remote, mechanical keyboards, Counter-Strike, um, pretty much anything.